Brent, she's doing okay. She's just been grooming it and licking at the wound very tentatively. Obviously, it's quite sore, especially with that rough tongue of hers. So she's just been doing a little bit of maintenance. You can see she's grooming around that area. I'm sure there's a bit of blood that also gets onto her coat from that wound. And so it's still seeping a little bit. So she's just, you see, she's very gentle around that area. And I'm sure it's quite painful, but she's just keeping it clean. And she, this is how she has to do it in order to be able to get it right. And you can see, look, there she's grooming it. Shame, my girl. Is that a bit tender? I'd imagine it's very tender. See, she's gentle, though. Look, she's amazing how much more gentle she is than she would be if it was the normal coat. Helen, you're asking if lions have healing properties in their saliva. No, not so much. In fact, actually, their saliva for us as people is very bad for us. It's got lots of bacteria that can cause all kinds of things. But what it is is that she's doing is she's grooming and she's getting rid of any sort of parasites that might be getting in there. She's also cleaning, getting rid of any dirt. So her rough tongue is getting out the um, dust and dirt and all the other stuff that could cause a little infection to start so even though they've got a lot of bacteria in their mouths that for us as humans they've able to deal with that bacteria but they're able to clean it and keep the the dirt and horrible stuff out of it as well as controlling the parasite numbers inside there so that's why she's getting in there and she's just getting rid of all of that and, and just making sure that the wound itself is kept basically washed if you want to call it that but there's no antibacterial properties that are in her in her um, saliva remember that these guys eat rotting meat and all kinds of other things and that means that they do get a little bit of a nasty mouth with a bit of bacteria and in fact whenever you're dealing with lions you've got to really be very careful and wash your, your hands and, and make sure you disinfect quite a bit because there's all kinds of nasty things that live on lions in the wild and well their immune systems are just able to deal with it so the grooming is just all like I said to keep the wound clean of dust and dirt and to make sure an infection doesn't start via that route. But Timfumo is probably my favorite part of this whole sighting right now. He's lying like the boss. That's how you lie when you are the boss of what's going on. <laughs> Look at him. He's got paw on the belly or on the chest. Legs are wide open. And he's just really taking it very easy. So he's a happy, happy cat at the moment. But what is amazing is just to look at the size of his muzzle and his face in comparison to the lionesses so the lionesses have these kind of they i mean they're not small animals by any stretch of the imagination but these boys dwarf them in terms of the size of their head and face and the size of their legs they've got these massive paws i mean look at the size of that paw imagine being hit by that that's almost like the size of a dinner plate that you're dealing with so not a something you would want to be on the receiving end of but very funny when he's sitting like us and look at his back legs he's kicking he's busy running <laughs> he was moving his back legs there we go <laughs> are you dreaming Mfumo. so he's obviously having a good dream about chasing something or other because the back legs were moving around and he was kind of kicking them he's stopped now but that was quite funny like I said, that is the sort of quintessential king of the area lion mode that you see right there. It's as good as it gets in terms of a male lion. You, <laughs> if you want to see them moving. Now, I wonder if our injured female is going to move. It looks like she might get up soon. She's kind of looking around. So I'm hoping that she will get up because I really want to see how she's walking. And I would imagine she must have somewhat of a limp. The guys say that they didn't see her limping, but there must be some sort of limp on that leg. It can't be pleasant when she's walking. And so I want to try and just see how much discomfort she's in. But watching her groom there was actually quite interesting because she was basically grooming and you could see there's a fissure between that muscle and it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. It's, it's not right down towards the bone. She's able to kind of lick the meat and just kind of clean it all out and you can see the flies landing back on there again now but it's not as bad as I, I thought it would be and, and she's certainly if she's putting her muzzles deep into that wound and grooming it's not as painful as I thought it would be either so she's obviously doing okay and 
just shows you how strong and how tough lions can be to deal with something like that and still be able to groom it. If you had to do that to a person and say to them, right, I'm going to clean this out with a rough s sponge, they would be in serious pain and probably shrieking and going crazy yet this lioness just does it on her own and is still moving around and walking with the pride it's quite incredible actually Jared's buddy you're asking about plants that have an antiseptic or numbing effect um, there are one or two um, not that the lions would ever use it um, just so in relation to what we're seeing now there are some now in the in the summer I mean the winter months difficult to show you a lot of them are most of the ones that I know of are pretty herbaceous in in their treatment of things um, but I know that the guys will use a variety of different plants so in terms of pain relief the Tamburti plant um, for especially toothache they say if there's an infection that the, the latex from Tamburti will help clean up the infection and also deaden the pain so that's a sort of pain reliever um, the devil's thorn has got an antiseptic property in it so when you mix that with water it goes quite soapy and that's got a bit of an antiseptic to it so that's another one that we have but now in the in the winter you don't see devil thorn much at all it's a more summer growing little kind of low creeper to the ground um, just trying to think what else is out here there's so many and I'm just drawing a blank all of a sudden uh, when it comes to summer we get I'm just trying to think of the other herbaceous plants that they use as antiseptics it's always one of those things when you want to think of something and you just forget completely I'll get to it so eventually it will come to mind and I'll remember some of the other plants but like I say devil thorn is one and, and the tamburti for deadening of pain um, is another so as they come to me I will remember and I will try and get a more comprehensive list in the next little bit as I'm sitting here thinking about it I will tell you one thing though is the weather is becoming more foul by the minute it's really not very pleasant out here in fact my eyes are burning from the amount of dust that is being blown into them and clouds are coming in from the eastern horizon at the moment they're slowly but surely moving this way and and it's getting cloudier and cloudier now I did say that we were supposed to get a bit of rain this afternoon but I'm not sure if we will it's the clouds don't quite look like rain clouds they're more kind of wispy clouds at the moment but they it's amazing to see how they've come because when we started this morning the sunrise came up and we didn't have any sign of clouds anywhere here there was no clouds it was a completely clear sky now